Our next guest is Vito Latora. Vito is professor of applied mathematics at Queen Mary University of London, where he also chairs the Complex Systems and Networks Group. He is a pioneer in network theory, where he has contributed many famous ideas that are widely applied. Welcome. I spoiled already my first transaction. Okay, I work. Uh, I work. Uh, and teach in a, in a maths uh, department, but I'm, uh, I'm a physicist. My background is in physics. I started uh, a few years ago as a, uh, as a nuclear physicist, but I realized very early that um, uh, nuclear physics was not, uh, was not for me. We always ended up meeting the same people, going to the same conference, but even more disturbing, uh, we were discussing always the same topic. I, I needed uh, something, but I found that a bit boring, don't say that around, but I needed uh, something, uh, something more. I needed uh, to go and uh, meet people from, from, uh, from different disciplines. I wanted uh, to know uh, their open uh, problems. I want to discuss uh, uh, with them. I want to interact with the real world. And so it was in this way that uh, without even noticing that, uh, I ended up uh, doing, uh, contributing to complexity science. And this is uh, because uh, complexity among uh, all the sciences uh, is uh, certainly uh, the queen of uh, interdisciplinarity. Okay. Let me elaborate a little bit about uh, on, uh, on, on this. What is uh, interdisciplinarity? I found a nice, uh, a nice definition. I want to read it because it's uh, so detailed and uh, um, this is uh, from a report uh, by the National Academies, uh, 2004, a okay? long time ago. And they say, interdisciplinary research is a mode of research, okay? is a mode of research by individuals or by teams uh, that integrates information, data, techniques, tools, perspectives, concepts, I would add ideas, tools, uh, so, sorry, theories from two or more disciplines or body of specialized knowledge to advance a um, fundamental understanding or to solve the problems was a solution are beyond the scope of a single discipline. Uh, so in a few words, it's the opposite of specialization and uh, involves the combination, combining two or more uh, academic disciplines into one single activity to create something. So it's about creating something new by thinking across the boundaries. Uh, now, let's, let's have a look at, uh, at the history. Okay, we have uh, plenty of examples of interdisciplinary approach to, to science. You know? uh, Greek, uh, Greek philosophers, they were dealing with uh, philosophy, mathematics, politics, mm -hmm. ethics. We have other examples, Leonardo, the Renaissance uh, men. All of these are uh, examples of uh, complex uh, scientists, if, uh, if we want. Then, <laughs> with the production of, of knowledge, what we have experienced, we have experienced a diversification, but also a specialization in different disciplines. So you have maths, you have physics, you have philosophy, and unfortunately we also created boundaries, we also created walls between these, these disciplines. So what can, what can we do? Uh, I think we still need in interdisciplinarity. Uh, if, we want to, if you want to get a, a complete picture of the world where we are living and where we are, we are working. So, as in many things uh, in my research, I try, to, I try to link my research with my life. So, uh, one of my research teams was to understand what is, uh, what is interdisciplinarity and whether interdisciplinarity is rewarding in modern science. So, I just uh, show you one slide of, of one paper. What we did here, we, we tried to characterize the a interdisciplinary level of, of a scientist, of a single scholar. Okay, just by looking at uh, 
the variety of, of ease of her uh, publications. So, so this is what, uh, what we have in, in this axis here. So here you've got the scientists always publishing with the same keywords and the same topic, so very focused the scientists in one discipline. So on the other end, we have, uh, we have uh, people publishing with different, uh, with different uh, keywords, with different packs, numbers. For, and then we are here measuring something is a success is a success uh, uh, well is one measure of, of, of the importance of what you are doing this is uh, technically is based on uh, impact on, on your peers so normalized the number of citations and things like that and when we plot the success as a function of the disciplinarity we, we observe something so you see very specialized researchers they are doing quite 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 well, you know, they can be quite successful. Then if you are going, if you are doing a little bit of interdisciplinarity, you no, know, there are risks to do that. You have this, uh, but then this is the ni nice news are that uh, if you are doing really interdisciplinarity, you can get a good amount of, of, of success. And um, uh, journals, uh, scientific journals have already, have already discovered this. This is an issue of nature appeared in September 2015. It's, uh, uh, why scientists, uh, talking about why scientists mark, must work together to, um, to save the world. Okay, so what are the, 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 the challenges that we can, we can face and hopefully solve uh, that require an interdisciplinary approach? So here on, on one side, you have the human brain. We know a lot, neuroscientists know a lot about, about the, the human brain. On the other side, you have uh, human societies. Okay, so this can represent interactions, friendship, job relations, uh, um, formation of cultures, cities, smart cities, sustainable cities. And now we have the opportunity to look at the global picture. Uh, this is one example of some recent uh, experiments in which uh, you, can, uh, you can start looking at, uh, both already mentioned something like this, you can start looking at the brain of a social <laughs> brain, the brain of the people while they are interacting. And this is the first step to, to go towards there. That's where uh, I think uh, complexity science with uh, its own interdisciplinary approach can, can contribute. What is uh, an emerging common framework in all uh, these uh, systems? Uh, certainly we have uh, networks, actually we have uh, coupled networks, we have uh, networks with, uh, with the many layers. You know, in the brain you have uh, networks uh, connecting, uh, sending electro uh, electromagnetic signals from one uh, chemical signals from one neuron to the other neuron, but there is also the blood supply that is another network and this, of course, is a mix of many networks coupled together. Let me show you just to, to give you an idea of how complicated can be this structure of networks of networks. This is a, a plot of connection and interdependencies across the economy, uh, sources, Department of Homeland Security, National Infrastructure, and here you see networks, uh, this is electric power grid, this is uh, the transportation network, uh, government services, banking and finance, uh, communication, and these networks live on a delicate balance of interactions. So what um, looks to me is that in the last year we have contributed, and still we need to contribute along this line, with uh, the mathematics of complex networks and the mathematics of networks with many layers, or the mathematics of network of networks. So we can certainly all advantage from interactions between among different disciplines, but in order to, uh, to do that, we need to destroy these boundaries, we need to create a common language, so my hope is that I'm sure that the complexity will become the Esperanto of, of science. Thank you very much. <laughs>